May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And also with you. Amen and amen. Friends, two hours ago I stepped into the sanctuary here when Lynn was preparing for worship at the Oregon Council, and it was a gift. First of all, it's a gift to be in this space, in this sanctuary, when it's just it's filled with music, organ, choir, anything. It's just a real gift. But second of all, just over two hours ago, the sun was rising over the Oxford skyline, and it was coming right through these windows, and it was brilliantly and brightly illuminating this sanctuary, and it was a blessing. It was a gift. Immediately, my mind turned to the words of today's psalm, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. So friends, it is with much gratitude that we come to this time of worship. With joy and gratitude, we welcome each one of you into this space, each of you, every one of you, in person and over the live stream. For the Holy Spirit has been filling this place, just waiting for you to be here in worship, in this sanctuary, in this sanctuary of space. So as we gather from such varied backgrounds over the week, our unique experiences over the past couple of days, we invite you to connect with the spirit that's already in this place, as well as one another. For those who are sitting closest to the center aisle, we have these blue friendship pads, and I invite you to take that and fill that out and pass that to the person sitting next to you so you may connect with one another. For those joining us online, there is a link right above the live stream where you can click and you can connect with us. And for any first-time visitors we have with us here in the sanctuary, there is a QR code in the bulletin where you can scan that with your smartphone and connect to that same online form. I'll pick up a card that I just dropped here. On the cusp of this Thanksgiving week, we bless Pastor Mark, who is on vacation this week, and we bless him and his time with his family and friends. And we look forward to welcoming him back to worship next week. Immediately following worship today, we encourage as many of our church family as possible to remain right here in the sanctuary for a very brief informational meeting right after church. It will be hosted by two ruling elders from session, Gene Krebs and Ginny Layton will share a update on the work of our task force for outreach and growth and the work of the session. You see, the Holy Spirit has inspired this work. It is so vital to the future of our congregation, and we seek your input. We need to hear your voice. So after the postlude, as the choir comes down, please plan on remaining here just for a few brief moments um, for that brief informational meeting. And then all are welcome for a time of fellowship in the lounge. At the beginning of this Thanksgiving week, we prayerfully encourage each one of you to read through the ministry events and news items in the bulletin, in the Friday Voice, and on our website. If you're not receiving our Friday Voice, it's our weekly e-newsletter. You can find a, a button in the upper right-hand section of our church website, oxfordpresbychurch.org. Click on that, and you'll be connected to that, as well as getting our monthly newsletter. Opportunities abound for service and fellowship this week. This, this Thursday, all are invited to a community Thanksgiving from 1 to 4 p.m. at Oxford Seniors. All are invited. You can go to TOPS to sign up to serve, um, or if you know that you're planning to go to that community meal, you can also go to the TOPS website to serve. Um, you may also share your time in serving and or bringing one of your favorite dishes needed for our community meal. You'll find um, in the ministry news and events um, the, the form that you can let us know what you're bringing to uh, our community meal hosted by this congregation at the seminary, not this week, but next week, the last Wednesday of the month, um, and you can find more information in the bulletin about that. You'll also find more information in the bulletin and, and on the website about Advent opportunities that are just around the corner. Um, and I see on the pews here for all those in person that there's information about the poinsettia and the, and the special music offering as well. So many events. And one late-breaking news item that didn't make it into the bulletin before it was published because we had this confirmation after the bulletin was published is that next Sunday, a week from today at 4 p.m., 
Um, we have the privilege of hosting a mission coworker through the Presbyterian Church USA, Jock Taikala. Josh is our mission coworker to Ghana and West Africa, and he'll be coming through Oxford next Sunday afternoon. So Sunday at four o'clock at the seminary, we invite you to join us in welcoming Josh and learn about his ministry there and for a time of brief refreshments. So four o'clock next Sunday, more information will come. And um, just before we come to our moment for ministry today, um, I want to share how thankful we are for the bounty of generosity that you members of this congregation have shown in your support for the work that God has called us to do in this time and place. Last Sunday was a joyful day as we consecrated the pledges thus far received for our 2024 annual stewardship campaign. For every pledge and every person behind that pledge, we are grateful. If you've not yet had the opportunity to make your pledge, I invite you to take a few moments to find one of these pledge cards, both in the narthex and in the office hallway, as you think of the things that you are most thankful for, and as well as how you can make a financial commitment to the ministry of OPC for 2024. You'll not only find the cards in the narthex and in the hallway, but also on our church website under the Give tab. So now, this morning, I'm honored to welcome Katie Rashi on behalf of our Christian Education Committee to share a moment for ministry with us. Katie? Good morning, church family. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, choir. Good morning. <laughs> As we look into 2024, our Christian Education Committee is wanting to try something new that will hopefully expand the knowledge of our congregation on a variety of topics. The Holy Spirit has moved within us and we are feeling that small groups are something that could help us connect with one another and grow in our own personal faith journeys. Before we start small groups, we want your input. What are you interested in learning about or studying? Does it look like studying a book of the Bible? Is it studying a period in Christianity? Or would you like to be, who would you like to be in a small group with? Does it look like a group of other mothers or other couples? Anything you can think of, we want to know about it. For today, there are two ways you can give us your feedback. You can create a handwritten suggestion on the back of the visitor, welcome visitor card um, that's there in everyone's pews, and you can put that in the offering plate. Or you can take a short online survey that can be accessed by the QR code that can be found in your bulletin. We hope you will take the time to complete one of these because we want to serve you. It will also, I will also be available um, during fellowship to answer any questions you have. I will leave you with this. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, for where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katie. Indeed, the Holy Spirit is moving. Christian Education Committee really welcomes your feedback as we look forward to small groups being created next year. And the QR code that Katie's talking about is just found at the bottom of one of your bulletin panels. Now let us turn our hearts and our minds to worship our living and loving God. Good morning again, cherished children of God. Good morning, choir. Good morning. Cherished choir. As you may know, early conversations and planning is underway for our bicentennial as a congregation in 2025. Indeed, the very sanctuary that those in person gather today, this was a centennial gift in 1925, built to God's glory almost 100 years ago. 
And inspired by our psalm for today, our call to worship invites us to lift our gaze from the present moment and to set our sights on the horizons of time. Psalm 90 reminds us that God is always working within us and among us from generation to generation. Truly, from age to age, Christ is always welcoming us to join in this work. So inspired and challenged by Jesus' welcome, we welcome you into this time of worship. We welcome you, your age and your race and your ethnicity. We welcome you, your economic location and your political persuasion. We welcome you, your gender identity and your sexual orientation. We welcome you as God has gifted you physically, emotionally, and mentally. We welcome you for you are a beloved child of God and the Holy Spirit is within you, within us now. So in Christ's welcoming and transforming presence, I invite those in person to rise and body your spirit as we come to our call to worship. Please join me in these words from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. You have been our home throughout all the ages. You were there before the world was made and will be forever. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God, and we worship you. Friends, let us turn to hymn number 643, Now Thank We All Our God, a hymn cherished in this season of Thanksgiving. change it up a little bit. Good morning, choir. I'll start with you and Lynn. And good morning to the rest of our church family. From gracious generation to gracious generation, with open door and open hands, and with open hearts and open minds, our congregation has welcomed all. This vision of Christ's church is a gift that leads us to reflect upon and confess how we fall short 
fruit of this legacy today. Will you please join me with our prayer of confession? Gracious and holy God, before you live our lives are opened to book, we confess we have not allowed your story to shape our story. We proclaim the cross without being willing to suffer, your grace without becoming more graceful, and your love without responding to your call to love. Let the Spirit of Christ be renewed in us, and let your reconciling love transform us in heart, soul, strength, and mind. Amen. In worship, we praise and pray. In worship, we listen to God's still speaking voice. In this moment, let us listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit as we offer our personal prayers and confessions while we hold a precious time of sacred silence together. Amen. Please join me in our response for assurance of forgiveness. As the psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and remember all of God's kindnesses in forgiving of all of our offenses. God, God takes our sins farther away than the east from the west. Believe and share the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. Hallelujah and amen. As the body of Christ here in the sanctuary and everywhere, May the peace of Christ be with you, and also, also with you. Forgiven, freed, and filled with the peace of Christ, remember that we are part of the body of Christ. We are part of God's work in this world. Please take a moment to turn to one another and share the peace of Christ. If your neighbor is someone you've not met, please introduce yourself for all are welcome in this place. with you. Oh, friends. It's wonderful to be here this morning on this Sunday before Thanksgiving. Now, I know that some of you are in school. You have this week off from class, don't you? That's awesome. Thanksgiving break is here. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, isn't it, Aiden? Aiden just told me how many days he has off from school. That's awesome. I, I'm sure it's going to be a great break. So over this, that's right, over this break, we celebrate the holiday of Thanksgiving in which we gather with friends and family and neighbors around tables, and we, we often share lots of food. Do you have any favorite foods for Thanksgiving? Oh, what's yours, Emilio? Stuffing. Oh, absolutely. Any other favorite foods? Lola? Mashed potatoes. Aiden, how about you? Corn. Oh, Evie's dad is making turkey. John, how about you? What's yours? Mac and cheese. That's awesome. Jack, how about you? What favorite foods do you have? 
Corn. Oh, that sounds great. That sounds great. Well, I am so looking forward to Thanksgiving as well. Nico, did you share what your favorite food was? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Oh, likes the turkey and the lemon that's on the turkey. That sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. Well, part of the uh, of the joy of Thanksgiving for me is being with family and friends and neighbors and being grateful and sharing the blessings that we have. And this is the third Sunday of the month. And on the third Sunday of the month, we usually gather together all the loose change that's in our pockets for what we call community change to be a blessing for the congregation. And not only will this change be a blessing for the community from the congregation, but it will help put food on the tables of those over this holiday season. So for those in the congregation, our children and young disciples will come in these brightly colored buckets, and if you have any change in your pocket or your purses, feel free to put it in this bucket. Raise your hand so that they know they can find you. And this is a way that we become stewards together of the blessings that God has given us in our lives. Now, we need a couple of volunteers to go up to the choir. Aiden, you can go to the choir. You can take that one, and you can take that one, Nico. Now, will you stand with me? And I'll just share buckets here. Here's yours, Evie. Here you go. John? Jack? Wonderful. And I might need to help. Now, if you have any change, go ahead and raise your hands. Okay. Okay. We need some to go down to the center aisle. Nico, if you go to the choir, that would be great. And Emilio, if you can go down the side aisle. Oh, that's great. I might need to go down. Oh, we've got great volunteers here. Oh, friends. <laughs> oh, it is. It's wonderful. What a blessing. And as our young disciples are going, just keep those hands raised. This is one of the ways in which we model stewardship to one another throughout the ages, throughout every generation. And in this time of stewardship, our young disciples are helping us know what it is to gather the blessings, to be a blessing, and to share those blessings. How are we doing in the choir? We're looking like there's a lot of activity. Thank you for being such a blessing. I see a few with your hands still up. Keep those up. Because our young disciples are circulating. Thank you, good sir. Thank you. And keep your hands up. Aiden, you can come, you can come up here. I still see a few with their hands up. Aiden, you can help them with that. Oh, I love to see these, these young disciples, some with heads just tall enough to make it over the pews. Johnny, if, if you'd hold yours, we're going to add our blessings to your bucket of blessings, okay? Okay, Aiden, can you go ahead and add yours up to John's there? Now, I'm looking around. Is there anyone with a hand up? I think we've got, oh, oh, oh. Nico, can you add your bucket to this bucket here? And then Nico, go ahead, good sir. Okay, way in the back, one of the ushers has her hand up. Go way in the back and watch for the hands. Okay. You, you have some too. <laughs> oh, let, let, let's go ahead and put, Emilio, go ahead and put your blessings into Evie's bucket here. And Jack, let's pour them all into um, Evie's blue bucket. John, you can hold that. Jack, go ahead and pour it in there. And then I'll take your empty buckets. You can stack them in my empty bucket here. Well, go ahead and pour yours into Evie's. That? Oh, wow. That's amazing. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and put our here on the floor, and we'll make our circle around them as we have a moment of blessing together. Put your hands together, and right over left, and then take the good hand of the person next to you, because we have a blessing for one another that God has first shared with us, because we remember that no matter who you are, and no matter what you do, and no matter where you go, you are always loved by God. But we can't keep this blessing in the circle. We have to send it out, and we do that. Thank you. Now, 
as a congregation, we love to share in blessings. And first, the congregation has a blessing for you, and then you have a blessing for the congregation. So, are you ready? Okay. Oh, wait. We bless the congregation first. I had that slightly out of order. Are you ready with loud voices to share a blessing with the congregation? One, two, three. May God be with you here. And congregation, your blessing for our youth. May God be with you there. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Nico, can you help me? Can you put these two? Thank you. Got them? Go ahead and put them right at the feet of those chairs back by the table. <laughs> okay, our prayer for illumination. Come, Holy Spirit, open our minds and our hearts this day that we may be illumined by your living word and walk together as children of light. Amen. We wrap up our study of the Psalms today. Let's open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to the Word of God before us for the 19th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like a week or like a yesterday as it has gone past. The days and the years go by and you sweep them away. They are like a dream or like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning, it is refreshed and it is renewed. And in the evening, it fades and it withers. Lord, teach us to count our days that we may have a wise heart. Holy Spirit, holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Oh, friends, in the fullness of this worship service, it is such a joy to welcome Billy Maynard. Billy, I've been looking forward to this moment for weeks. Wow. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Several weeks ago, actually a couple of months ago, I approached Billy and I said, Billy, the Sunday before Thanksgiving has a psalm that I cherish. Billy and I have shared with one another how much we really cherish and appreciate the book of Psalms. In fact, yes. Billy has been studying scripture for generations, but we, we frequently connect over the Psalms. And I said, Billy, this, the, the lectionary Psalm for the Sunday before Thanksgiving is Psalm 90, and it speaks about God being our dwelling place from generation to generation. I said, Billy, will you join me for a sermon dialogue on that Sunday? And you know, she said, she said, you know, Jim and I were planning to go to Florida just days before that, but let me talk to Jim. So <laughs> they talked together and they changed their plans to travel to Florida so that Billy could join me for this. So Billy, what a privilege. Thank you. These sermon dialogues are occasional in our worship life as a congregation, and they're really designed for seeking, seeking clarity and wisdom of what it means to be people yes. of God living in this time. Yes and bringing our whole selves to Scripture and letting, letting the Holy Spirit speak through our lives as we engage Scripture. So, so um, Billy, we'll come to the text, Psalm 90, in just a moment. First, I, my, my question for you as we begin, for those who may know you well or those who may not know you, can you tell us a little bit about your childhood and your youth? Was there a spiritual or religious background to your childhood? Fortunately, I was raised with a good foundation. And recently, since we've been talking about generational faith, I've discovered through my genealogy that my Lutheran ancestors from the 1600s 
were Protestant Reformation and they brought their faith uh -huh. to the States. And so my parents had me in Sunday school from the time I could walk. So I was in Sunday school from the time I could walk. I started, confirm I was baptized. I started in confirmation from the fourth grade to the eighth grade. Uh, I became, I, I even sang the Magnificat. <laughs> and, and when I was in high school, I was, I was Christianized, all right? I was Christianized, but there was something missing. And I didn't know it. I could, I could recite the fact that, yes, I'm baptized, so I'm going to heaven when I die. And yes, Jesus Christ died for my sins, but there was no personal relationship that I had with Jesus. So then I go to college. I came to Miami, and Jim and I were dating. So one week we would go to the Methodist church, which was absolutely packed with kids. And the next Sunday we would go to the seminary church with Ed Fairman, which wow. was packed. So when he went to sea, I spent my whole uh, senior, in year college at the Presbyterian Seminary Church. And I remember walking up those stairs with a packed balcony wondering, I wonder if the balcony is going to fall in today. <laughs> so we were married, yeah. raised our kids. I was a summer home mom. And that was, that's basically where I was yeah. when we were married. Yeah. yeah. Billy, thank you so much. So, um, you know, the, the, this psalm begins as a song, as a hymn. It's really a cosmic song. Um, Lord, you've been our dwelling place for all generations. And that, that phrase, dwelling place, for me, is one of the most evocative descriptions of God's presence in Scripture, dwelling place. It comes from the Hebrew word meon. And it means a refuge, a sanctuary, a dwelling place. So, Billy, you were just elected last Sunday as a, an elder, a ruling elder here at Oxford Presbyterian Church. And you shared with me after the nominating committee called you and, and, and shared this nomination and asked if you would be willing to accept the nomination. You, you shared that you were just, just a little surprised to be nominated as an elder in this season of life. So could, could you share with us a little bit about how you have experienced God as a dwelling place, as a sanctuary over your life and over your span of years? Well, it was really interesting because I did not know you were going to talk about small groups, mm -hmm. that you're going to have small groups. Yep. My life transformation began in a small group. It was a Jesus model. The pastor taught a Bible study for 12 of us. We were committed for four years to study the scriptures, two years in the Old and New Testament, two years teaching the congregation. That was our first small group. We wrestled with God together. We went through the whole Old Testament, just, just arguing it out. We had mentors, mentors in the big books. So at the end of those, at the end of the first year, I began to realize with a narrative, it was the scripture narrative of the Bible, that Jesus Christ is the Lord of history. And I had to make a choice. I could either be an Abraham or a Jezebel in, in following him. And I surrendered to the Lordship of, uh, Lordship of Christ, and I became radical. I mean, I was so radical that I should have been locked up for six months. <laughs> I was wondering, when we go to church fellowships, why don't we talk about Jesus? So one day, we took the, the pastor's wife and I decided we were going to con we were going to evangelize two members of the congregation. They were sitting in their living room, watching through out of the window. They saw us coming and ran out the back door and hid in the bushes. <laughs> now those two ladies came to see us this summer. They're both following Jesus in their church and in their community, and they're serving God. But I'm telling you, we were radical. So Jesus became my dwelling place at that point in my life. Yeah, shelter that sanctuary. That is, you know, <laughs> Billy, as you use the word radical, that reminds me, like, one of the roots of the word radical means root. Oh. You know, to, 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 a radical, to get to the root of something. So it sounds like you are getting to the root of, of God as your dwelling place yes. through the person and ministry of Jesus the Christ. Yeah. So, yes. So, um, so in addition to dwelling place, 
Are there other words that you would describe your relationship with the triune God? So the, the, the psalmist might say dwelling place, or we might say sanctuary, mm-hmm. refuge. Are there other words that, that have been meaningful to you as, as, as you think of God as your home and your dwelling place? I would say resurrection power. Okay. In the book of Acts, we have, the, we have the scripture where Jesus says, now don't leave until you have the Holy Spirit, which is the dunamis, come upon you. Mm-hmm. So you ask the question, well, don't we get the Holy Spirit when, we're, when we receive Jesus? Of course you get the Holy Spirit when you receive Jesus. Well, then what's this power thing? Sure. Methodists called it the double portion mm-hmm. or the second blessing. Yeah. It's a power that comes upon, it's a resurrection power. Now, Paul knew about this. So I call Ephesians and Colossians the Himalayas of the New Testament because Paul, when he prayed, when he prayed, he said, do you really know the greatness of the immeasurable power that dwells within you? Do we know that? Do you know what your inheritance is in heaven? Do you know what it means to be the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit? And so we go to the book of Colossians and Paul tells us in Colossians, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Now, the one that's really interesting to me is the fullness of the Godhead dwells in our Lord, and you are complete in him. So we have to ask ourselves, what does it mean to be complete in Jesus Christ? Now, you see, see I'm nuts, but anyway. <laughs> I believe my favorite verse, one of my favorite verse in the scriptures is in uh, Colossians, which it says, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in him and hidden in Jesus Christ. If it's truth, it's Jesus. If it's truth, it's a person, it's Jesus. So I'm a Jesus person. I talk about Jesus a lot, if you notice. And you remind me of the words, as you say truth, the, the words inscribed over Upham Arch here at, in Oxford, yes. Miami. You, know, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Yes. So, Billy, um, as you... Ex- if you continue in my work. Yes, yes, yes. They admit yes, that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, the psalmist is, is, is dwelling in that power, dwelling in the presence and I, I use the word a hymn. There's this cosmic, there's this cosmic yes, feeling. Yes. And, and you were using the word power and immeasurable riches. You know, that, it's, it's, it's a moment of epiphany. Yes. And, and it's almost as if um, the, 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 the psalmist is, is the, the, the curtain is being pulled back for the psalmist to see what is beyond the veil. And yes. then the psalmist is looking down at, at, at their hands, maybe. I almost picture the psalmist looking down at their hands and, and then looking at their bodies. And, you know, Mike shared the words, you know. Um, um, you we're know, fragile. We're, we're, we're fragile. We're mortals. That's right. You know, um, Mike said, you know, um, in, in the words of Psalm 90, you turn us back to dust and you yes. say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight or like yesterday when it's passed. So, so Billy, you, as I mentioned earlier, you and I connect over the honesty of the Psalms um, yes. about how honest and authentic they are, and they allow us to bring our whole person to the, to the Psalms. Um, and the Psalms are particularly frank about our humanity, our fragility, yes. our finitude, yes. and our failures. And I'm going to come to that in just a moment, but, but the Psalms are also these, these they, they, they express the fullness of who we are, right. um, including the many ways uh, that the Psalms extol the gift of life. So, um, Billy, um, you've spent decades study, studying Scripture in the Psalms. So through your study of the Psalms, first I want to ask, what have you noticed? What positive attributes do the Psalms express that God gives human beings? How are we gifted through the power of God as expressed in the Psalms? Well, first of all, what I discovered was Psalm 1 and 2 are really the summary of the entire Psalter. Uh In Psalm 1, God gives us a choice. He tells us, this is your choice. You can either follow me or you can follow the wicked. And the whole summary of the Psalms is our choices we make in life. And when we go to Psalm 2, it's God telling his story, what he thinks about us and what he thinks about wickedness. 
But Psalm 8 is the psalm which, which comes to mind when, when the psalmist is looking out and he says, I look at the heavens and all that thou created, and I ask myself, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Thou hast created us a little lower than the angels. You have given us authority and dominion over the, all the earth. So the first thing we know is God trusts us to be stewardships over the earth. So there's a responsibility that comes with our faith. Oh, I call it, I tell you what I call it. You've <laughs> probably heard of this because we live the life of the cross. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and might, and thy neighbors as thyself. Think about it. It's up, and it's, it's the cross. It's That's life. our cross life. It's if life. we try to live this life without this, it'll be failure. And so the psalmist, oh, I love this psalm. I love this psalm because they have every human, ima yeah, ima every human emotion. Yeah, me too. During the pandemic, that's all I did was spend yeah. time in the psalms. Yeah. Yeah. I groused a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and Why are there so many laments more than are, praise? There are. There are laments <laughs> and there are pleas and prayers yes, in the psalms. Yes. And, and in that, you found a dwelling place. Yes. So, Billy, um, Psalm 90 here, it, you know, talks about our mortality. So, so having, having been blessed and gifted as human beings, my question for you then is how, um, if you are comfortable, as we learn from one another, how have you learned to live with your mortality, your finitude, your fragility, and your failures? Um, are you comfortable in sharing that sure. with us? Well, first of all, as you get older, you think more of this than this. <laughs> I mean, our life is... Yeah, yes. Uh, I'm going to be honest as a Christian in ministry. If you are serving Jesus, you are going to be hurt. You are going to be criticized. People are not going to understand you. You're going to say things that are not nice to people. You are going to be unkind. You're going to be mean, and you... And how are you going to deal with that? Well, what I did, that's the bad news. Now, the good news is every Christian, I, in studying Christian, the history of Christianity, every Christian who has done anything good is going to go through this. Why? Now, this is really interesting. Every Sunday in the Lord's Prayer, we say, Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We're the ones to bring it down to earth. The devil doesn't like that. He's going to distract us in any way not to fulfill our calling. And so that's the other good news is that Jesus said, beware if all men speak well of you. Mm -hmm. And so in my life, when this happened, I would walk a lot. I would walk the dike. I would walk around the lake. Literally walk. Literally walk. walk. I would walk. go up and down Swan Beatty Road. I would walk. I had a friend who would come with me, and all she did was walk with me. She didn't talk. She knew what I was going through, and all she did was walk with me. Wonderful. Now, the other thing is, because I've been called to be a Bible teacher, I always went to the Word of God to find an answer. I would sit down in that scripture until Jesus would talk to me. And what I discovered in my Bible, I was underlining it, and then I would put the date. Like, this is funny, like 3-5. 1985, and the scripture was, God, why don't you do something? Why don't you get your right hand out of your bosom? <laughs> See, God's right hand was the one that did all the work. <laughs> or one in 1986, when, when the scripture was, my heart and my strength may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Oh. So I had to, and then Paul, what does Paul say? Oh. Paul said, we have this temporary affliction to prepare us for the eternal glory that will come to us. Everything that we, and then he says, we look not to the things that are seen for they are transitory. We look to the things that are unseen for they are eternal. All our life is a tension between what we dwell on this earth and our time in heaven. And, it's, and as this Psalm says, our time on earth is very short. Mm -hmm. Let's make it worthwhile. Because the psalmist says, all our days are filled with, Mike, you didn't read this, toil and trouble. <laughs> oh, Billy, you remind me of the saying, life is brief. We have little time to tr 
gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us or walk with us. It says, oh, be swift to love and make haste to be yes. kind. Yeah. Billy, so you bring us right to the end of our reading for today, which um, is the pricelessness of time, the preciousness of this physical life. Verse 12 lifts up a prayer to God, teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Um, or the King James Version says, teach us to number our days. Mm. I've, I've really long appreciated the writing of Annie Dillard, and Dillard oh, yes. says, how yes. we spend our days, of course, is how we spend our lives. So you, you, you've already helped answer this question a little bit, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to perhaps share a little more, expound in a different way. Um, in your life experience, what practices help you to live most fully the life that Christ offers? What practices help you to live most fully? Walking, you've mentioned walking. Yeah. You mentioned scripture, time and time with scripture. Yes. Um, are there any other practices that you'd like to add or share with well, us? Well, since the church is going to be involved in small groups, I've always been in a small group. I've always loved small groups. My, my favorite small group is to take a book of the Bible and to go through it line by line. People are afraid to do that. But in a small group, you don't come as a knowledge person. You come as, as a person with this trying to seek answers. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite. Uh, th there's a little saying I really love. I said, if you only have the word of God, you'll dry up. If you only have the Holy Spirit, you'll blow up. <laughs> but if you have the word and the spirit together, you will grow up. Yeah. So that, that's been kind of like my life together the word, seeking Jesus, sitting down in the morning, having a routine. Every morning having a, not just saying, hello Jesus, I'm gonna do a brief thing with you. It's sitting down and letting him speak to you through your heart until he actually speaks to you through the word. And of course he speaks to us through other, he speaks to us through nature. Absolutely. He speaks to us through other people. He speaks to us in his word. He has many ways of speaking to us. Billy, you've shared your gifts of seeing, seeing the creator through the natural world around us. Many of us have been blessed with Billy's cards, the cards that she has created from pictures and photos that you've taken mm -hmm. from around this world, and you send them and you give them away, so I can see that as a practice. So my last question for you, Billy, is what encouragement might you have for us to live lives honestly in this way of faith? Or what pieces of advice would you have for your church family to help us live with the hope of Jesus' love that, that, that may help us to live most fully day to day? Well, when I was teaching the Psalms, I, I sent out a request for the ladies in the, in the Psalms, and I said, tell me the, the five, your favorite five scriptures. Yeah, the Psalms. What are your, what are your first five Psalms? And, and the third one came back with Psalm 139. Psalm 139 is God pursuing us. To know that Jesus and God are pursuing you. They're not going to give up on you. They're going to go after you. As John Doan says, he is the hound of heaven. And so first of all, know, as Paul said, Know that you have this transcendent power within you. It's a clay pot. We're clay pots. We're fragile. We're broken. But there's a transcendent power within us. And what I'm discovering lately through, through uh, what's his name? Tom Hyland, who wrote a book called Dominion. It's the story of Christianity. He mentions there that, that the Christian faith is strange. And I've had, and this is something new to me. We have lived with so often with this. Think about it. Jesus lives within us right. if we're a Christian. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Your dwelling place is in the spirit. And so to know that we sing it, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So think about it. We sing it. Do we know it? Jesus lives within us. That's the power. The word is the power. Depending on him is the power. And crying out to him. Uh, Billy, I remember the first time I met you, 
Um, it was an August day, and you were among um, a, a group of church family members welcoming students and their families. We were serving refreshments to them on the lawn of the seminary during move-in weekend in late August. And the very first question that Billy asked me um, was, she said, Lawrence, who's your favorite theologian? I had just met Billy, and I wasn't prepared for that question. And I remember answering and, 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 and um, sharing actually two favorite theologians um, with you, Billy. One was Reinhold Niebuhr. Reinhold Niebuhr and Paul Ricoeur, yeah. that's right. That's exactly right. Among, he was an ethicist, by the he way. He was, absolutely. And we have much to learn from, from these and one another. But I, I've, I've, I've reflected on that question over the years, and as I've been preparing for this, I've been thinking that I'd like to add another theologian to that list. I'd like to add you oh. <laughs> to oh. that, because I've, I've learned so much from you, and, and, and I know that we all have. And we, I was struck by what you were sharing about a friend who would walk with you. Yes. We walk this way with yes. Jesus, with one another. Right. And it just strikes me as that this has been an Emmaus moment with, for me and, 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 and perhaps for those who, who are with us in this worship moment. That we've been walking and talking, and um, perhaps our eyes have been opened, and we've right. found our hearts burning within us. So, I, have, I have to share one thing about Mother Ter uh, Teresa of Avila. Yes. Teresa of Avila is known as a great mystic. Teresa Avila was going on a trip, and her horse and buggy fell over. She got out in the middle of the road and started screaming to God. Now, God, I know what you do to your enemies, but look what you're doing to your friends. It's a wonder you have any. <laughs> you see, God wants us to be transparent with him. He wants us to praise him. He wants us to complain to him. He wants us to grouse to him. But in the end of every psalm, it is always, I trust in you, Lord, for you are my portion forever. Yeah. Oh. Billy, thank you. <laughs> and friends, will you join me as we close this time in prayer? Gracious Lord, we praise you and thank you for, for taking us, our whole selves, our authentic beings, as we are transparent and open before you with open hearts and minds and hands open lives, Lord. May your story change our story, and thank you for Billy's story, how she has found you as a dwelling place, how Amen. she has found your son Jesus as her Lord and Savior, and how the joy that she shares and the, the, the witness to the transforming power um, uh, is, is, is such an encouragement and an inspiration to us. So we praise you, and we pray that you would continue to be our guide and our dwelling Amen. place in all generations, and that we would indeed find ourselves turning to you so that you may help us count our days and gain a wise heart. It's in Christ's name yes. that we pray and praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Friends, our next hymn is hymn number 716, God Whose Giving Knows No Ending. Let us rise in body or spirit as we sing hymn number 716. <laughs> Billy, grace to you. Yes. Um, you want to make sure you.
I invite you to remain standing as you are able and returning to your worship bulletin. Friends, along this journey of faith and life, we are companions with one another, as Billy has so powerfully reminded us. And over these many weeks, we have traveled together as we have explored the Declaration of Faith of the PCUSA. In addition to our creeds and confessions that are the first part of our denomination's constitution, this Declaration of Faith was adopted in 1985 by the General Assembly for our study and liturgy and inspiration. So let us join our hearts and voices through this affirmation of faith. We believe Christ gives us and demands of us personal lives that are centered in God and open to God's reality and rule. Christ teaches us to put obedience to God above the interests of self, family, race, or nation, and to offer God joyously our money, ability, and time. It is part of our discipline to observe a day of worship and rest setting aside our own working to enjoy God's work, celebrating with sisters and brothers the Lord's goodness. We constantly search out God's way in Scripture, not expecting detailed directions for every decision, but relying on the Word to tell us who God is and press God's present claim on us and to assure us of God's grace and comfort. We are charged to pray for ourselves and others with gratitude, boldness, and persistence, confident that God hears and answers our prayers in best for us all. If in God's presence issues in life for others, for if we do not love sisters or brothers whom we see, we cannot love God whom we do not see. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, friends. It is with gratitude that we come to this time of prayer, the prayers of the people. Indeed, we are grateful for all the joys and concerns that you share with us every week and that you continue to call into our church office or email us or share with us in person those joys or concerns that you have had. And as we come to this time of prayer, in, in the midst of the prayer, we will share the joys that you have have given us this week, and I will, after those joys, say, God, in your grace, and invite you to respond, hear our prayer. And then we'll continue with our concerns, and after the concerns, I'll say, God, in your mercy, and invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Let us join our hearts in prayer today. God of life and light and love, from age to age, from generation to generation, you have made yourself known to us through your word through the companionship of one another, through the creation that you have surrounded us in, in the First Testament. You have reached out to us so often and so persistently and through the ministry and witness of Jesus Christ that we know your love for us. And so we pray that we would draw near to you, God of the generations this day. We would draw near to you, not as distant followers held at arm's length or feeling shamed or somehow judged by you and put out until we are perfect, no, but you draw us close as your beloved children. So it is with thanksgiving and gratitude during this season of giving thanks that we lift our prayers of joy up to you. We give thanks for the bountiful harvest from fields and gardens all around our communities. We give thanks for John Curry's birthday on Thursday. We give thanks for Pastor Mark's vacation, and we pray that you would bless him in that rest and renewal. And we give thanks for the continuing generosity and commitment of this congregation through our annual stewardship campaign. God, in your grace, hear our prayers. We also come to you, God, this morning with our concerns. We pray for world affairs beyond our control. We pray for news that comes into our homes and in our pockets and purses and our classrooms and offices, Lord. For news from around this state and around this nation and truly around this world that we have no control over, for it is beyond our agency and our choice. But Lord, it impacts us, and we pray for your mercy and wisdom in our time. 
Keep us mindful of the people of Ukraine who continue to endure grinding war. We pray for peace in Ukraine, in Russia, in Belarus, Moldova, in the entire region. We pray for the people of Israel and Gaza. We pray for peace, knowing that you alone are the source and font of shalom, of a peaceable way. We pray for those in harm's way. We pray for protection. And we pray for the awareness and grace for ourselves that we may learn how to trust in you and how to learn forgiveness in the face of fear and grief. Teach us how we may serve you more fully in ways that we cannot even imagine at this moment. Lord, we pray for needs closer to our homes. We pray for our own communities. As these some pleasant autumn days give way to the cold of coming winter, Lord, we ask that you would open our eyes, our hearts, our minds, our arms to the needs of our neighbors who are on our very doorsteps. Lord, where community and family members suffer with illness, we pray that you would grant your healing touch, bringing wholeness. We pray for those who are experiencing mental and emotional illness or addiction, Lord, we pray that you would give us all understanding and compassion. We pray for those who may be isolated over Thanksgiving. May we be a place of friendship, a warm haven where love is shared and food extended with grace. We pray with gratitude for our communities, Lord. We pray and give thanks for all those who weave community and offer the grace to build up our community. Lord, we pray that you would inspire us all to give back with our time and our talent and treasure, to love our neighbors in real and concrete ways. Lord, give us the grace to care for one another and to receive care. We pray especially this day for the family of Debbie Anderson, for the family of Jean Marks, for the family of Sherry Webb. We pray for Karen Simpson and Bill Brown, for Jay Fry and Tim Techman. We pray for Bill Jenkins and Wayne Houston, for Nancy Sturgeon and Jane, Jan Reinhardt. We pray for Ron and Connie Everhart, Anne and Janae Hesse, Vi Suit and Jim Baer, Nancy Gates and Ray Patterson, Amber and Peggy Stitt. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Generous and gracious God of infinite abundance, with this day of Thanksgiving approaching, we are reminded to give thanks for the ministries of this congregation with which you have entrusted us. We are honored by the opportunity to be your body in service here. So we ask that you would take all of these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying with one voice, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends in faith, God has truly provided all that we need and more. And in response for God's grace and these blessings, we give thanks for the abundant and generous gifts that you offer this ministry. I have two cards with me this morning. The first is this pledge card. Thank you to all who have offered your pledge to the ministry of Oxford Presbyterian Church over the calendar year coming in 2024. If you still need a pledge card, you'll find them in the narthex as well as the hallway. The second card I have are these giving cards. You'll find these in every pew rack. These cards are a representation of the many and varied ways that we offer our time, our skills, and our experience, our financial gifts, whether it's a gift in the offering plate or text or QR code or online, all the ways that we give throughout the year, these pew cards are a symbol of those gifts. So I invite you, whether whether you've given recently or once in the year, whether you give of your time every week or you give it occasionally, 
whatever your gifts, you support this ministry and we invite you to take these cards and put them in the pew, in the, in the offering plate. Friends, now is the time to dedicate ourselves and to offer our very best to the glory of God for the gift that we've first received in Christ Jesus. Let us receive our morning offering.
his letter to the Ephesians, Paul encourages the congregation of believers and seekers, saying, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. In this ministry, we do not cease to give thanks for your goodness and generous giving. You are changing lives with the good news and abundant life. Let us join our hearts in the following prayer of dedication. God of steadfast love and faithfulness, we are so humbled by your grace and generosity, generation after generation. Receive, we ask, these gifts and use them for your work to transform our church, our community, our country, and all of creation. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Let us lift up our voices in the closing hymn of praise, God of grace and God of glory, hymn number th uh, 307. Beloved body of Christ, go out as witnesses in all you say and all you do, sharing the blessings that God is our dwelling place in generations. We go out as witnesses that this amazing grace is a gift that requires no money or price. This is a gift. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, so much grace and peace is ours today as a blessing. Friends, I was sharing 
recently in conversation that it is such a privilege to be in worship, to be leading this congregation in worship. It is always one of the greatest privileges of my life, week after week. And Billy, what a privilege to be with you in this sermon dialogue. After our postlude, we will have the opportunity, we invite everyone who's available to, for the brief congregational meeting to learn more about the priorities from the Task Force of Outreach and Growth moving forward. We ask just a minute of your time for that after the postlude. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Alleluia. Amen. Please be seated for the postlude. <clears throat> 